from New York City, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Tonight's story, The Adventure of a Wooden Claw. Well, here we are again, sitting in front of Dr. Watson's heart. The coals have burned low, and over the rosy glow, we face our favorite medico and storyteller. Uh, what's tonight's adventure to be, Dr. Watson? I suppose I tell the one Mr. Stark in which Holmes suggested, I present myself as the next victim of the individual called the cat. Victim of a cat? <laughs> yes, Mr. Stark. The cat was an unpleasant person who went about bashing in the skulls of bank messengers in Boston Yard, which, as you know, gives out to Hogarth Lane, of course. Oh, naturally, naturally. Yes. A ruthless and cunning criminal, that cat, sometimes called Peggy. Aha! So it wasn't a tomcat. <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Stark, jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Now, Dr. Watson, will you go on with your story? With pleasure, Mr. Stark, with pleasure. It was late one Saturday evening in May. Holmes, who had been promising to get at it all day, was finally sorting out certain odds and ends of notes and papers. He sat at his desk, the lamplight shining up into his eyes, looking rather like some gigantic bird of prey. I lay on the couch enjoying my faithful briar. You better put out your pipe if you're going to drop off to sleep. Oh, I, I wasn't sleeping. I was thinking. I always think better with my eyes closed. And when you're snoring, I suppose. I wasn't snoring? Perhaps not, but you were getting ready to. Nothing of the sort. Some people can't endure seeing anyone else relaxed and at ease while they have a job of work to do. May I point out, my dear Holmes, that if you had got at your labors at a decent hour, as I did, well, you would you take Watson, stop being so confounded smug. Hello, what's that? Well, the doorbell, of course. Oh, don't look so hopeful, Holmes. I don't imagine it's anything that will interrupt your labors. Probably a call for Mrs. Hudson or the greengrocer to leave his weekly bill. It's not the greengrocer, Watson. He rings once and slips the bill under the door. No, that is someone for us. Ha-ha! <laughs> Whatever brought him here is sufficiently urgent to necessitate my postponing sorting these papers. Thank heaven. Come in, come in. Mr. Holmes, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Holmes, it's Mr. Merriweather. You remember Mr. Merriweather, the chairman of the city and suburban bank around the corner from saxe coburg Square. It, but the trouble isn't there, but in the suburban branch this time, Dr. Watson. The Chiswick branch, to be exact. Chiswick? It was originally pronounced Chiswick, Watson, and it's still so spelled. It means cheese farm, I believe. Oh, but I don't imagine Mr. Merriweather has dropped in to discuss the most frequently mispronounced of all means of communication, the English language. Good Lord, no. It... Mr. Holmes, something must be done to protect my bank messengers. I've had six in hospital with concussion of the brain. One a week for the last half dozen weeks. It's always on Saturday night it happens. Dear, dear, I was under the impression that Chiswick was a quiet, respectable suburb that rarely indulged in that sort of a Saturday night. No, but it doesn't. At least it never has, uh, well, up to six weeks ago. And now, every Saturday night regularly, one of my bank messengers has been attacked and robbed. Robbed of a considerable sum of money. Oh, now we come to the crux of the matter. What exactly were your bank messengers doing with large sums of money on Saturday night? They were carrying it from the Elephant and Castle, the famous old alehouse in Boston Yard, uh, to the bank to be deposited. Isn't that a rather unusual procedure? Uh, it is, Mr. Holmes. It is indeed. Yeah, but that's how we persuaded old Mr. Jeremy, the proprietor of the Elephant and Castle, to bring us his account. Hmm. You see, the Elephant in Castle does its best business on Saturday night. <laughs> Not unusually, Holmes. Watson, Watson, quiet, quiet, please. It, oh, Mr. Jeremy is somewhat fidgety about having that much money lying around the place till the bank's open on Monday morning. Well, he's been robbed twice, and it's made him rather nervous. Oh, sir, I blame him. If so, we arranged to have a bonded bank messenger uh, sent over every Saturday night after closing hours to gather up the money so old Jeremy could sleep in peace. Now, I, I wish we never made the offer. 
Uh, once the bank messenger has signed the receipt for the money, well, the bank is liable for any loss, uh, down to the last penny. By Jove, then you have had an expensive six weeks. Not expensive. So far, it's cost us close to 3,000 pounds. Hmm. Tell me, Mr. Merriweather, when did the first of these robberies occur? It was seven weeks ago tonight. It was shortly after closing hours when the policeman on the beat heard a yelling and a shouting as he came down Hogarth Lane. The spring mist was rising off the river. And at first, he could see nothing. Calling, but I can't see a place itself. Hello, what's the trouble and where are you? In here, through the archway, in Boston Yard. And who are you? And what's the difficulty? I'm Paddy Donovan, caretaker of Hogarth House. There's a man lying lying under stones in bad need of help, I'm thinking. Huh? It's black as the inside of my pocket in here. What's happened to the light of the elephant in Castle? Sure, it's been put out this half hour. The elephant is a law abiding house. You'll never see old Jeremy serve a man a drink after all. <laughs> Unless he's paid double for it. Now, don't try to whitewash Jeremy. I know the old scallyway. Oh, 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 oh. Bring your lantern over here. You'd, you'd best see what can be done for this poor chap. He's in a bad way, I'm thinking. Uh, well, let's have a look at him. Oh, glory be to God. It's a bank messenger from the city in suburban. A robbery, that's what it is, I warrant. When did it happen? I couldn't rightly say, officer. All I know is that I was locking up the front door of Hoggart's house previous to going to bed when suddenly I heard a scuffle here in the yard and a man called out like he was in martial agony. You uh, ran in here at once? Just so fast as ever my wooden leg would carry me up. I'm not so spry as I once was, you know. But, but I was in time to see a great shadow of a man dressed all in black, with a mask over his face. He was leaning over this poor fellow here. When I came into the yard through the archway, I says to myself, Aha, I've got your trap, me bucko. Uh, of course. The archway is the only entrance to the yard. Or exit, either. Except you go through into the elephant and castle. Which I've been after telling you has been closed this half hour uh, since. <clears throat> That's as maybe. Well, at any rate, the man shoved past you and out the archway, eh? That, that he did not. I may not be so spry in my feet, but my fist is as good as ever. No man alive can come into a Paddy Donovan if he ventures within arm's reach. Oh. So he went in the elephant and castle. He did not. Then I suppose you'll be telling me he disappeared into thin air. He did something stranger than that, my lad. He skinned up the wall and over it. Like a cat. Whoop! Wow, that's impossible. That bare wall is 12 feet high, and there's nothing for a foothold anywhere. Possible or not, that's what happened. Up he went and over. Like a cat. A great black cat. Uh, give me the uh, priest, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Look, uh, this, this bloke's bleeding. Wait, it's the back of his head, I'm thinking. There's blood oozing out in the pavement from behind his ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me turn him over. Uh, we'll have a look at the injury. Uh, Lord, love us. Will you look at that? A nasty blow it must have been. Cool. But it's more than just an ordinary blow. Blimey. Look here. Look here. Great bloody gashes running right down into his neck. Like he'd been hit with a rake. Or clawed by a giant cat. <laughs> Wills, Mr. Holmes. I promise you, that's what they look like. The claw marks of a gigantic cat. A cat man, eh? Who scales 12-foot walls and whose blow leaves deep gashes. Hmm. Interesting, Mr. Merriweather. Interesting and just a bit incredible. Well, there is no such creature, Mr. Holmes. There can't be. Oh, I don't know. I saw one once. It was in that French music hall. Remember, Holmes? The church went up a smooth, tiled wall nearly 16 feet high. 
I believe he had some sort of suction device attached to his hands and feet. Oh, that could account for it, I suppose. It might account for the fellow's disappearance over the wall, but not for the gashes and other significant phenomena. That is what interests me, Watson, those gashes. Uh, this man with a wooden leg, uh, Donovan, I believe you said his name was, is he a reliable witness, Mr. Merriweather? Uh, why, yes, uh, at least I suppose so. He's been caretaker at Hogarth House for over 15 years. Hogarth House is where they have the famous collection of Hogarth drawings and the like. It's open to the public daily, except Sundays, for a small fee. I'm afraid Donovan isn't kept over busy with visitors. He spends much of his time at the Elephant and Castle. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's it. He was drunk. Instead of seeing a pink elephant, he saw a man-sized black cat who was substantial enough to claw and rob the bank messenger. Oh, well, if you're going to be technical... Tell me, Mr. Merriweather, were this fellow with a wooden leg and mine host of the Elephant and Castle on good terms? So, Donovan and Jeremy have been cronies for years, Mr. Holmes. So then anything unusual that goes on at the Elephant and Castle would be known to both? Undoubtedly. Hmm. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, between them, they'd cooked up a neat little scheme to, to do the bank out of a tidy sum of money. Of course, Holmes, I see it all. Incredible. Old Jeremy follows the messenger to me who has just handed the day's profits out into the courtyard, bludgeons him, and retires quickly with the money into his own premises. Then along hobbles Mr. Donovan with a cock-and-bull story about seeing an incredible cat-like creature. Jeremy recovers his day's earnings and is reimbursed by the bank as well. Mm. Whereupon he has to slip the swag with Mr. Donovan and is consequently no better off than if he'd saved himself the trouble. I see your point, Mr. Holmes. Uh, but there are people, you know, who enjoy making a crooked sixpence more than a straight shilling. Mm. Oh, but good heavens, it's after eleven. And I promised Jeremy I would be at the Elephant in Castle by closing time. You mean you're undertaking the job of bank messenger yourself tonight, Mr. Merriweather? Uh, uh, right, I, uh... Well, I, I, I'm not a particularly brave man, but uh, I don't feel I have the right to ask an employee to take a risk I wouldn't wish to assume myself. Oh, well. Mm. But on the other hand, I'm not completely foolhardy. I, I think the danger would be considerably minimized if I were assisted by Mr. Sherlock Holmes and uh, uh, Dr. Watson. What do you say, Watson? Would you consider a possible encounter with a cat man who robs bank messengers a sufficient excuse for postponing tidying up my papers? <laughs> what do you think, Holmes? I'll go and fetch my service revolver. Thank heavens there's a moon tonight and no fog. But here we are, gentlemen. Hogarth Lane takes its name, of course, from William Hogarth, who's country residence was here situated from 1749 to... Who goes there? Good heavens, who are... I mean, what was... Calm yourself, Watson. It's merely a police officer on duty, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, uh, they station an officer at either end of the lane every Saturday night now. They've never caught anyone or prevented the numerous repetitions of the first crime. Mm, not so far. Well, tonight should be different because Scotland Yard has personally taken over. Well, well, if it isn't Inspector Lestrade, my favorite watchdog of the public safety. And what do you think you're doing here, Holmes? Endeavoring to stop the robbings and bludgeonings which the official minions of the law and order don't seem to be able to terminate. Well, you'll not go one step nearer to the scene of this crime. No one's allowed in Boston Yard tonight without a permit. It, which I have duly obtained, uh, for myself and bodyguard. Here it is. And you in thunder, are you? Oh, allow me to introduce you, Lestrade. This is Mr. Merriweather, whose bank has suffered a considerable loss for six successive weeks due to the inefficiency of the police. So you go to blazes. With pleasure. I'm sorry to have to rush off, Lestrade, but I'm afraid you're making Mr. Merriweather late for his appointment at the Elephant and Castle. Come along, Watson. Mm, not a very well-lighted thoroughfare, eh, Holmes? Well enough. I doubt that anything will escape my notice. Conceit? Pure conceit? Mm. Tell me, Mr. Merriweather, in the case of the succeeding Saturday night bank robberies, was the pattern of the crime similar to the first? Almost identical, Mr. Holmes. Except that policemen have been stationed at either end of this section of Hogarth Lane to make sure that no one could leave or enter without being seen. Well, the police are as skeptical as you about a cat van, Mr. Holmes. And yet, each week, a messenger has been clawed on the back of the head and robbed without uttering a sound or putting up a struggle. Oh, not without uttering a sound, Mr. Holmes. Each time the victim has cried out. But by the time that Donovan has reached the spot, the culprit uh, was vanishing over the wall. Then, in each case, Donovan was the first to reach the victim. Uh, why, yes, uh, that's right. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, but that's only natural. 
Sullivan is in the habit of smoking his last pipe on the steps of Hogarth House, where, where he is the caretaker. You see, uh, over there, uh, Hogarth House is almost directly opposite the entrance to Boston Yard. And consequently, um, after the cry was heard, he was able to reach the scene of the crime ahead of the police, who had to run some distance. Oh, sounds reasonable enough, eh, Holmes? Mm. Oh, yes, that must be the old boy up ahead there. He's sitting on the steps with one leg stuck out before him. Yes, he's noticed us. He's getting up. No. He's walking away in the other direction. Oh! Great Scott, what was that? A prelude to the night's crime confounded. But that's impossible, Mr. Merriweather is here. Without... Don't argue, Watson, run. There goes. A gentleman through the gate into, into the yard. I say he's a spry for a chap with only one good leg. Because he doesn't waste his breath as you do, Watson. Here's the entrance. Gentlemen, what happened? Why, I warned him not to do it. I warned him, Mr. Merriweather said, that you were late and he wanted to get the money to the bank. Good thought. It's Jeremy. For the flag of his best old Jeremy. But the money's safe. And up this time, they didn't get it. I was waiting. I'm done for, but the money's safe. Mr. Jeremy, you know who hit you. I, 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 I suspect it for some time. Now I know. He is badly hurt, Holmes. He's going fast. He can't, not before he tells us. Mr. Jeremy, who is the criminal? It's, uh, it's, uh, Peggy. Peggy? I, uh... Holmes, he's gone. Oh, Jeremy, Jeremy, my poor old Jeremy. But who in thunder is Peggy? It, do you know, Donovan? Well, how should I know? The cat, it, it must have been a woman all the time. A woman dressed in men's clothes. A woman who could give a man a blow hard enough to kill him and then disappear over a 12-foot wall. You saw her do that, Donovan, before we came in the yard a minute after you got here? Well, well, that is normal. Maybe tonight I, I, I didn't see the killer. Maybe tonight I... Well, I, I wouldn't know. I, I was that upset when I seen it was Jeremy. Hello, hello, hello. What's up? What's wrong here? Mr. Jeremy has been bludgeoned, Lestrade. He's dead. Oh, he is, eh? Right under Mr. Sherlock Holmes's nose, eh? Lestrade, whoever finished off old Jeremy is still here in this courtyard. We, he couldn't have scaled the wall this time. We'd have seen him. But it wasn't a he, Holmes. Mr. Jeremy said his assailant's name was Peggy. I don't care what his or her name was. If he or she is still here, I want him. Or her. You fellas, touch the yard. That's what we've been doing, Governor. And uh, I think we found something interesting here behind the rain barrel. What's that? Well, it's a man uh, lying like he was drunk. Somebody that was thrown out of the pub earlier in the evening, like it's not. And who resented it and vowed to get even with Jeremy. There's motive and opportunity as well. Arrest him and take him off to jail. And you, Donovan, help him carry the body back into the elephant and castle. Yes, sir. This way, boys. Uh, carry him easy and with respect. My poor Jeremy. My poor, poor Jeremy. Well, Holmes, you can't say Scotland Yard hasn't acted with dispatch and efficiency. And with its usual lack of intelligence and concern for truth and justice. If this man isn't guilty, I suppose you can tell us who he is. Quite. However, you wouldn't believe me. You see, I have no proof of my theory. It will take until next Saturday night to acquire that. I feel dashed silly, Holmes. Dressed up in this bank messenger's outfit. What's the point to it all? Watson... We're dealing with a sly and devious criminal. The only way is to catch him red-handed. During your service in the Far East, I believe you've taken part in a tiger hunt. Oh, what of it? You know the procedure. The hunter tethers a kid or a lamb to a tree and then retires to a nearby blind to wait for the tiger to attack his prey. Only this time, it's not a tiger we're after. It's a cat named Peggy. And I'm the goat. Quite. Yes, I think you may start on your journey across Boston Yard, Watson. It's raining tonight, lowers the visibility. However, perhaps that's just as well, or the killer might recognize you. Hmm. Well, I'll open the door and out you go. 
You've got the earnings of the elephant and castle safe in your pouch? Well, naturally, you put them there. Well, good luck, Watson. Don't be too nervous. Remember, Lestrade is hidden behind the rain barrel. Well, a fine lot of comfort that is. Well, let's get it over with. Now, tune up, old boy. And whatever you do, fall sideways when I call out. Into a mud puddle, probably. Don't argue, do as I say. Your life may depend on it. Good Lord. What a night. Teeming cats and dogs. Cats. Never cared much for cats. And this isn't going to improve much. What's that shadow slinking along the wall over there? Oh, confound this rain. I can't see a thing. Ah! What was that? Someone's coming this way. He's running through the gate. Donovan. Hey, Donovan, watch up. He stopped. He snatched up his wooden leg. He... What's in the dark? Oh! Now then, Donovan, I'll take that wooden leg if you don't mind. One with which you bludgeon seven people. So it's you, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Something told me this was my unlucky night. You can come out to Spard and take criminal in charge. You needn't crow, Holmes. I saw the old thing. Well, got your head ended this time, Donovan. Yes, you've got the criminal and his weapon. Notice the spikes in the upper end of this wooden leg. No wonder the victims looked as if they'd been clawed by a giant cat. Well, no use hanging about in this blast of rain. Come along, Donovan. You've slugged and robbed your last thing, Mr. Jack. It reminds me. Watson, where are you? Flat on the ground in a puddle, of course. Look at me. Nice mess. <laughs> uh, I say, Holmes, I'm... I'm still perplexed, you know. Why? Well, who was the man who screamed just now? Why did Jeremy say the cat's name was Peggy and... When did you first suspect Donovan was the criminal? The answers to those questions can wait, Watson, until I get you safely home in a hot tub. That puddle has soaked you to the skin. And besides, this is Saturday night. And now, back to Baker Street. We find Dr. Watson sitting firmly in the midst of an old-fashioned tin tub, to which Holmes is adding a tea kettle full of very hot water. No, oh, that's enough. Do you want to scold me? Yes, you are beginning to look nicely parboiled. Mm. Yeah, I think you'll do. Well, then, uh, how about answering my questions? Oh, very well. One. The man who screamed was never the victim, Watson. It was old Donovan who was building himself an alibi. He screamed when he saw his victim cross the yard. Then he dashed in, took off his leg and bashed him while the police were running down the street in answer to his shouts for help. Two, Jeremy said the cat's name was Peggy because that's what he called Donovan. Many a peg-legged man is nicknamed Peggy, you know. And lastly, I knew Donovan was the criminal when Mr. Merriweather told us how distinctly he described the cat man who crawled over the fence on the night of the first robbery. But uh, why was that suspicious? <laughs> Elementary, my dear Watson. It was a dark, foggy night. He couldn't have seen the criminal in detail. Remember, it wasn't until the policeman had turned his dark lantern on the victim that he could tell he was a bank messenger. Q-E-D. I see. Well, it's all so remarkably simple, once you explain. It always is, Watson. It always is. Well, don't just stand there puffing yourself up. You you might get busy and scrub my back, you know. Well, that was an interesting adventure, Dr. Watson's... world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character of Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley. 
Dr. Watson by Alfred Shirley, and the dramatizations are by Edith Miser. Sherlock Holmes is produced and directed by Basil Lochran, with special music by Albert Berman. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in the case of King Philip's Gold and Salver. Charles Saw, speaking. This is the world's largest network serving more than 450 radio stations, the Mutual Broadcasting System.